All right, guys, now I hope that morning session was useful, and thank you very much to Tim Davies. He can't stay any longer, I'm afraid, but he uh, gave an excellent presentation from eBay and took his punishment on the chin when we uh, had to dish a bit out, and he has undertaken to set up conferences between Brooks Angle, representing our members, which we hope you'll all be within the next week, and uh, eBay, and we'll go down to Sydney and see whether we can knock a bit of sense into them on this business about duplicate listings, and one or two other things. As I said earlier, we approve of their policy, as opposed to keeping their site clean, uh, but we don't necessarily approve of its application, which is a bit mechanical at the moment, and which could get in the way of us as booksellers who might want to list at eBay. eBay is only one site, of course, amongst many, and this is not an eBay afternoon or morning, it's a books angle afternoon and morning, but again, not entirely books angle either. The next paper is Specific Software Tools and Resources for Online Booksellers. Now, I'm going to be concentrating mainly here on stuff that we, Books Angle, have put together for booksellers. I'll mention briefly other um, options that are there, but in a sense, we feel that we have done more than anybody in the world, quite frankly, in pulling together a set of bookseller-friendly online bookselling tools and resources which are available to any of our members. Many of them available to members who join our site as free members at our bronze level, some of them available only to those who then pay the annual fee, which is how we fund the operation of course, and uh, that's where your more sophisticated stuff like your eBay and other stuff comes into play. And you have to weigh up whether, uh, at what point, you might feel that it's worth upgrading into that silver environment. But generally speaking, everything that we offer for booksellers is available at both levels, either entirely, as is, or in a slightly reduced version at the free level and a slightly more sophisticated version at the uh, fee paid level. So I'm going to run through, um, I'll just take my jacket off, I think. One, one little thank you is for in enough to the uh, operators of the Stamford Plaza Airport Hotel. You might remember at the opening today I suggested that we were in danger of becoming an extinct species and certainly an endangered species as second-hand booksellers. Well, when I uh, lined up the booking here, it's fiercely expensive, this place, but I uh, told them, I said, look, we're a bunch of penniless booksellers. None of us have got two bob to rub together. Um, and explained uh, that we were in danger of becoming an, or that we were an endangered species. And I said, now, if you don't help us do something about all this, then we are going to become extinct. And the next time you want to read an Agatha Christie, you're going to have to read it on a Kindle. And you're going to miss a centimetre on the right-hand side. And your hotel management guide will also only be able to available on Kindle. You're going to tell your management that. So they did, and in return, they came back so horrified, they chopped their rates in half. So uh, thank you to the... Uh, Stanford Plaza people, they've done very well by us, and I think they've set it up very nicely, and, and uh, congratulations to them. Okay, online book selling software. Everybody, just about, not everybody, I've already spoken to one person tonight who, who doesn't actually have a database, but most of us have got a database. It might be Homebase, it might be um, Paul Anderson's uh, um, database from Books and Collectibles, it could be a Book Tracker. Uh, I'm not going to ask for shows of hands on this because they're all different databases, they all work differently, they all have different things to offer. It's my contention that some of these databases are, are now past their use-by date. And in that I include Homebase uh, and I would include um, Bookhound, which is available from Biblio. I'm not suggesting that these databases are useless or hopeless, they're not, they're at least adequate. They do not give the bookseller, you, the power at your fingertips to increasingly do more and more sophisticated things, uh, uh, particularly as and if you list online at different sites. The only, uh, uh, the, our own database is a very sophisticated one. It's available free at the bronze level, but you must move up to silver if you want the eBay option. Um, but otherwise, Amazon is catered for. Our database is a very sophisticated one. The only database in the world, in my opinion, which is uh, uh, of equivalent power to our own is uh, Andy Gutterman's uh, Book Tracker, uh, which is an excellent database, uh, but which does not have an eBay option. And that, I think, for those who are thinking of moving into the eBay environment, would probably make ours the 
better bet on a comparison of the two. Uh, if you are uploading to Amazon, as only a few in Australia are, we've got a paper on that later where one or two are going to explain how that's not too difficult a thing to do and there's extra sales to be had there. Amazon is a simply horrible site, but let's, let's not beat around the bush. I mean, it's about as bad as it gets uh, in, in terms of the way they do their listings and the absolute horrible search engine they've got and all that. But they do, they do have this massive marketplace and they do achieve a lot of sales. So it's a question of bite your bottom lip and list there if you're looking to increase your marketplace. I appreciate that not everybody in the whole world is, is specifically aiming to increase their marketplace, but I would have a guess that probably 80 to 90% of booksellers selling online would like to do so, at least in a small form, if not in a major form, because sales have been contracting in many ways. Most of us with B&Ms, I think, would agree that our sales are, we're struggling a little bit. Uh, we're not getting the, the sales in our bookshops that we've been getting traditionally. That might be just a, a seasonal thing. Up in the Blue Mountains where I am in the last month, we've been absolutely wiped out by the bushfires. And uh, my, my turnover normally of about $3,000 a day in Mr Pickwick's books has dropped to just on 100 a day. Now that's massive, a massive hit to uh, the sort of infrastructure and over. That's unique because of the bushfires. But again and again, I get the message that sales are, uh, are not exactly soaring in our BNMs. Online sales are, are, are beginning to prove patchy in places like Abe and other sites we've often relied on. Sometimes they're holding up, other times people are saying, gosh, you know, what's happening? Now, I don't think there's a collapse in book selling sales worldwide. I think the online sales are going to increase. As I said earlier this morning, I think the phenomenon of people buying books online is beginning, not ending. It's a question now of how we harness that marketplace and what tools we use to do so and that's what this paper is all about and what I'm going to be working through. So it's all in the, um, in the um, uh, notes, or well, it's not all in the notes, but where, where I've included sort of specific data in the um, background notes for this talk which start on page um, 14 of your, um, of your um, program there. I, I, I won't just read out what's already written down there because you can take it away and read it. I just want to talk a little bit about two things. Firstly, I want to talk about our database. And I'm talking about my baby here because our desktop database I, I wrote, <coughs> I created. Why did I do that? I did it 10 years ago because I went and had a look at the available databases. I was getting ready to list online. I looked at home base and I thought, God, this is no good. I looked at various databases available at the time. I didn't, I'm going to say no good. I don't mean hopeless or dreadful or, or, or deficient. I just mean no good for what I wanted. I wanted a database that I could drive every which way I wanted to. I wanted one that I could gather up little groups of listings and say change their price, or I wanted one where I could gather up a certain type of listing and change all their categories. I wanted ones where I could set a template so that I could list things like auto manuals and so on swiftly and quickly where all the basic information is the same and I've just got to change the model number and a few things like that. I wanted a whole lot of things that simply weren't available then and still aren't in the main in the bookseller database that were available. So I wrote my own. And then as time went on, I made that available through what was originally the World Book Market and is now the site called Books Angle. And my database is available free to anybody who joins up as a bronze member. And I'm going to uh, run a few, um, a bit of commentary. Sorry, it commenced on page 15, not 14, as to, just to explain its background. Okay. That's the main entry screen for the database. You'll see in the little example, there's a drop down, that little white box, which is in the field called thus. You'll see that over there in addition, I've got first edition. You'll see that alongside, I've got a field called thus. And I populate the thus field by selecting the drop down and selecting one of the options that are available there. All these other boxes at the <coughs> bottom, marks, foxing, clip, edge, they've all got drop downs similar to that one, all of which have got these pre-prepared phrases, some of them 20 or 30 for each category. In the case of water damage, it might say uh, extensive water damage affects all of book. The next one might say has some water damage affecting rear and or whatever. And in 95% of cases when a person is entering, they can use the language in those drop downs without modification. They've been carefully crafted using proper sophisticated bookseller language and not stupid boilerplate phrases. Uh, some of the, the drop-down 
choices are, you know, quite long. Uh, every particular item of condition is covered and you can rattle through and go click, click, click and select uh, the bits that you want to describe your book. One advantage here is you can quickly train a youngster, even a newcomer, to the whole world of second-hand and antiquarian book selling. You can quickly train them to prepare a sophisticated listing, selecting in each case the nearest match uh, uh, within the drop-down choices that are available. And once again, you can then, if you've got expensive books or you want to really curate them, you can go and edit that person's work very swiftly. But you'll find that 95 to 98 per cent of what they've chosen, if they're intelligent and, and, and clever, will be dead accurate in terms of the book. And what that does, it constructs a listing out of all of that, which then is the one that is sent to A and your various other sites. If you'd rather not do that, uh, at quite that sophisticated level, just before we move on from there, other features there. You'll see the little question mark after the ISBN number. I'll put that in deliberately because I'll put in 11 digits instead of 10. As soon as you enter an ISBN manually, which is not correct in terms of number of digits, or if it doesn't verify, we've built all the software in for that, it'll put that little question mark up which tells you, hang on, that can't be right, go and have another look. The question mark will also pop up if you put an ISBN in for a book published before 1968. So if you put in year of publication 1954 and then happily entered an ISBN, which of course is ridiculous, one of them is wrong, it'll put the question mark up. Either it's published after 1968 or it doesn't have an ISBN yeah, in its correct form. So the database is designed to assist you get higher quality listings without having to double check everything yourself. Uh, various other features there which I won't go into. You can send emails directly from the database. You simply enter the uh, customer's email address and click go and it will create an email for you which gives the whole description and everything. Very handy when people email you say, have has this book got six plates? And you then go and amend your description, and you think, oh, probably should have mentioned that. You amend your description in the database, you say this book has six plates. You then click go email to that particular customer, highlight the bit he's asked about in blue. He gets his question answered, and your database has been upgraded to that extra information. So if he doesn't buy the book, your next uh, person looking at it online gets the benefit of that extra information. It's all a question of trying to integrate everything and trying to have it so that you enter things only the once in any field and having done that the database will automatically then convert that into Amazon speak, into eBay speak, into what all the various different sites want without you having to go and curate each individual listing to match what the site wants. You, anyone who's listed on Amazon will know you've got this ridiculous set of condition choices either as new, new, what is it? good, fair, acceptable. What on earth an acceptable book is, I've no idea. One that somebody accepts, I suppose. But, but anyway, that's Amazon's stupid way of doing it. So that if you've marked your book fair or poor in here, it'll automatically convert into acceptable for Amazon. The work is done for you, in other words. If, however, you'd prefer to use a more simplified version, this is number two, uh, Carl, we have a light entry screen which has exactly the same impact. It, uh, anything you enter here, you can go and look at in the main screen. And some people use the main entry screen for their main operator and have this one for their data entry person if they have, say, a junior who's entering data. who might find it easier to simply enter the limited number of fields and just simply enter comments instead of using all the... Some people prefer that method. And that's closer to those... Anyone used to using uh, a very uh, limited database like Homebase would, would, would find this uh, easier and, and uh, more um, familiar. Uh, than the main entry screen, which Phil calls the rainbow screen, and feels, perhaps with justice, that it's a bit daunting for some people, in which case this option provides a, a, a very sort of simplified version. If we move on now to the other sort of work the database does for you, I think it's important to the database not to simply carry copies of your records, which you send to have. I think it's got a bit of work, too. I, I hate a lazy database. A database should tell you if you're missing the binding field. It should tell you if you've forgotten to enter an addition field. It should tell you if you've missed the price. Because some sites, like Abe, if you send up zero price, or they just put a dollar on it, which is a bit dramatic if you've got a thousand dollar book and you've sort of forgotten to put the price in. Um, this error report gives you, you can see from what's on the screen, it tells you where you might have got it wrong. And this one's got three 
So in this database, which obviously is in quite good shape, because this, is, this comes from a database of 14,000 listings, but three of them you'll see are missing an edition field. Now it could be they are first editions. If they're a first edition, when somebody does an advanced search at eight books and selects first edition, your book is not going to appear. It's very important that you get those fields in there. Also, if you're pushing on to eBay and Amazon using this database, they insist on some sort of data in those environments. Now, admittedly, it's all their own garbled data, but we need to have the field filled in in order for that auto-conversion to take place. So this page helps you see at a glance, and you can set it so this boots up every time you open your database. It shows you what you might have wrong. If you go and click on the display button alongside edition missing three, you click display, it'll show those three on the screen and you can then go and quickly fix them and so on. That's the sort of work that comes from a busy database as opposed to a lazy database. If we move on to the next one, our database allows for multiple pictures as does our site Books Angle. At Books Angle site you can have up to nine pictures at any one time, uh, each one with its own caption if you've entered them using our database. You'll see this is a book which has nine pictures, which I've just put in there, you can display them. You don't have to put the pictures in there because that's just for display. But you'll see I'll put a caption on each one. This is just for demonstration, and that's the caption that will show at eBay and Books Angle. After 12, 13 years of operation, a site like Aid Books has never ever managed to get around to adding captions, the captions option to its site. But we, we have. And so does eBay, because with eBay, as you'll hear later with the descriptions, the great thing about eBay is in the description box you can set your own HTML. You can set it up however you want. Unlike A or other sites, you've just got their fixed thing. At eBay, you can put a picture of an elephant in there, you can have six giraffes leaping around, you can have an animated thing of Mickey Mouse if you want to. We don't recommend any of those, but, but you can set your text and your layout exactly as you want. And our database, when it creates its eBay pattern, and Tim will speak to that later, does all that for you. It creates it all in beautiful HTML formatted layout, which is one of the things that helps increase sales at eBay. This here shows the four, uh, the nine by uh, picture option. And one thing we recommend is that you use your Books Angle database, if you're using it, to upload eight, nine, six, seven, whatever pictures of your more expensive books. Anything over $1,000 we think should have at least five pictures. And we think each one should have a caption. Because whilst we're not expecting for a time yet vast sales on our Books Angle site, they will come because it's such a good site. One thing you can do is create a link to your Books Angle listing which you email to your customers who inquire about the book. And your captions that you can put on each picture can range from note the small nick to the top left hand corner of the leather binding or note the crack to the front spine or, or note the flaws or note the crease in the database or it could be the plates in this book are in brilliant condition with a picture of the perfect plate. Now all of that helps your sales and the higher up market you go and the more expensive your book the more sales you're going to get from giving that information visually to your customers particularly I've found when you highlight and specify the flaws. If you're, if you're brave enough to, to actually explain each flaw, not just with a little caption, but with a, with a photograph, highlighting the little stain on the front cover, your sales of your more expensive material is likely to increase. You're going to win the confidence of your buyer. Don't forget, people buying a $1,000 book usually are not Auntie Jill buying one for Cousin Tommy's birthday. They're normally sophisticated, serious dealers and collectors like most of the people in this room. And if someone shows you uh, an array of eight or nine pictures, each one with its caption, carefully pointing out, look, don't forget that when I say stained in the description bit, when I say it's got a bit of a stain, um, it's, um, I meant it, and here it is. Now, what you're seeing on the screen now is what you actually see at the Books Angle site. When you upload your nine pictures and somebody clicks on the book, this is what they get. Notice the picture itself comes up, the caption comes up underneath it. Now that is what we call our window display option. That is what you can email a link to one of your customers and when they click on it, that's what they're going to see. Now it's my opinion, they'll, they'll see that actual motion, they'll see the pictures rolling through, they'll see the captions, they can stop the pictures at any time. Creative use of that um, picture display um, uh, facility for your more expensive stuff, there's no question it will increase your sales 
uh, when you get inquiries. And all of us who list more expensive books, surely we must all be familiar with they're the ones that attract the inquiries. You say the dust jacket is chipped, could you send me a picture? You say the uh, inside flap is uh, torn at the edges. How torn? Okay, show them in advance. A, you won't get those emails because they can go and look for themselves. You will for a few, you can't be bothered, but mostly. But B, if you do get the query, you just go zap, send them the link, and hey presto, you've given a sales presentation second to none. And that's part of what happens at the site. Now speaking of the site, if we... Um, excuse me one second. Oh, sorry, uh, ne next one, uh, Carl. Next BZ, user admin. At the database, you can set all your options. These are global options. You can decide at your main entry, you, you might have entered language, you might have entered all sorts of other fields which are useful for various things. Here is where you set and guide the global um, uh, preferences that you've got. Do you want to include language in description? Yeah, this book's in German. Do you want to include key keywords in your descriptions? Yes or no? Some people do, some people don't. Um, you've got a whole stack of options there. Do you want to include the serial number in your description? Do you want to include signed in the description? Mostly you'd say yes to that. However, at some sites, like Aid, it'll come up twice then, because at Aid we've got a special field that says signed, which includes it in their signed advanced searches. Don't forget, at these various sites, Aid included, and eBay, the more specific information you can deliver from your database about whether a book is signed, whether it's a first edition, whether it's this or that, the better your sales will be because all the advanced searches will either include or not include your books. There are some people who are horrified to discover that over years they've put up thousands of books that are signed, but because of the way in which they've done that, they just don't appear in the advanced signed searches at Abe. It's a very good idea with your own books when you get home, go and have a look at a few that you've listed as signed and just make sure that when you include them in an advanced search, say at Abe, books actually turn up. If they don't, something is wrong with the way you're entering them in the database. In our database, you can't get it wrong because it's, it's all pre-configured and hotly tested to that regard. Sorry to pick up on that. <coughs> ABE can switch off the passing of the first edition if you ask them to. I never had the idea that a couple of years ago, and my books, even though they were saying signed edition, yeah. signed by the author, yeah. were not showing in advance. No, I'm aware of that, David, and, and I'm afraid Abe's passing is about as horrible as it gets. Um, it, it, simply, it simply cannot be relied on and, and, and that's why we get past all their passing. For those who don't know what passing is, passing means that aid goes and has a look at your description and ploughs its way through it looking for various terms. It looks for whether you put in first edition, okay? And then they think they're being very cunning because if you put not first edition they say, ah, well that isn't a first edition. But if you've got um, similar to first edition although issued 50 years later, I'm afraid it'll show up as a first edition because their passing hasn't worked out similar to first edition and so on. So it, it's worth avoiding all of that and using a database such as this one that specifically specifies that. Now, to be fair, if you're using Homebase, you've got a thing which it says, is this a first edition? You can answer yes or no, so that helps get around the problem. But relying on these sites to actually go and hunt through all this stuff and try and make logical decisions is not a very good way of, of, of making your data accurate and more salesworthy in our opinion. So that's your global setting. The last uh, uh, graphic on the uh, database itself is this one. You can use the database to generate all sorts of print catalogues or lists or whatever. You can gather up your just your books in Arctic books or your books on hunting or whatever category you've got and quickly print out a little four bit on it. You don't get the side of course, that's the database, but you just get the A4 page, see the logo at the top. And you can print that out and pop it in with orders that you get. We do it all the time. If we get an order for anything to do with, say, Arctic and Antarctic, we quickly print out all the books we've got available as a little mini catalogue and pop that in with the order. And we get lots of repeat business from, from doing that. They're neat little, neat, simple little catalogues. There's a fuller version which gives the whole description and everything if you prefer that, but that tends to burn up more pages. We find this one very effective and it's quickly done. And we have a few sitting there like if ever we get an order for an Arctic book, we print out two or three, and then we put one in and wait for the next one. It has dozens of different formats. I'm not going to go through them all. List formats, stock taking formats, um, uh, location formats. Lots of helpful things to help a bookseller organise their listings in ways that they simply can't do with, with most 
desktop databases. In other words, this one's designed firstly to try and drive extra sales at your various bookselling sites, is its primary objective, and its secondary objective is to save you, the bookseller, time and to give you extra power at your fingertips to gather up a whole group of listings and increase their price or whatever, or re reduce their price. You can gather up all books that were listed four years ago and, and knock their price down by 10% if you want to, or you can gather up all books listed four years and later ago that are just fiction and knock their price down if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, you can discover that books on royalty are now beginning to go through the roof and uh, the day is coming when that will happen, incidentally. I won't say why, but you can probably work it out for yourselves. But fairly soon now, all your royalty books will just disappear like, like flying saucers flying out the window. And you might want to get ready for that and say, I'd like to increase all my royalty by 25% because I know what's about to happen. Um, and when that does happen, uh, we want to do that. We've done that incidentally using our database on all books uh, um, uh, relevant, relevant to World War I because next year, of course, the media, with the centenary, the media will just go mad on World War I and you can bet your boots that any quality material to do with World War I will simply be selling like hot biscuits. There's no question about that. So probably a good time to increase all your prices now of, of that material. Anyway, that's all just idiosyncratic decisions. Now, so much for the database. Let's move on to the Books Angle site. Books Angle site is, firstly, it's a selling site, like all the others we've talked about today, books and collectibles. Um, that's a big sort of one. Oh, there you go. That's it. There's a, there's a sample of a listing, same listing. I'm using the same book, my book, actually. That's a listing on the Books Angle site. It's quite elegant. You've already seen earlier the nine pictures revolving through, but that's the way in which we set up our listings. Uh, we think it's classy. Um, uh, that's our selling site. When you join Books Angle, just like Books and Collectibles or bookshops.com, you send us all your books. We're happy to take them in home base, book tracker, your own custom spreadsheet, our own database, any, just about any database, and you just send us all your books and we, we put them online, just like any other site. We have, uh, we have the normal email bookseller and add to cart. The Books Angle site uh, does not charge any uh, fees on, on uh, sorry, it doesn't take any money from customers. The, the orders are sent to you, just like Abe used to be, and you process your own credit card, take down PayPal, do whatever you want. You deal with your customer yourself. It's entirely between you and your customer. If you're a free bronze member, we do charge 10% commission on sales only, and only sales at our site, not sales at other sites, of course. Uh, and if you're a silver member, you pay no commission. So our target is to get bronze members enough sales, $3,480 it would work out, so that the $348 fee they pay every year is sort of a no-brainer. And one day we'll achieve that. But in the meantime, uh, that's the site itself. If we move on to the next picture, in addition to actually selling, bit like I was explaining with the database, the site should not be a lazy site. Most sites are horribly lazy. They'll sell your books, take your money, that's it, goodbye you. Our site works for you. You can go and look at that page any time you want. And similar to what, this is particularly good for someone uploading with Homebase or, or not our own database, you get the same reporting as we showed you on our own database. It'll show you which books don't have an addition, where you've missed a binding. It'll show you where you don't have a category that's recognisable. It'll show you all of that. And once again, you click on the show books with uh, unknown binding and it'll actually put a list of them up on your screen. And this time it's a list of the listings, regardless of what database you've uploaded. To so gain advantage to this dashboard, you don't need to use our database. In fact, if you're using our database, a lot of that information is already built into the database. But here, this tells you the real story. It tells you how many books don't have a picture. You can go and flash them and have a look at that. Other sites will do that for you at least. Abe does that. Um, but Abe and other sites don't give you all this stuff about you know books with missing dust jacket and books with missing edition. That's all designed for you to use if you need to, and if it helps you to, um, to improve the quality of your data. And basically, most of our members, once they get used to it, use us as their control centre. Because of the next screen, our big feature, the jewel in our crown, if you like, is that we will forward all your data to all your other sites. I touched on that briefly earlier this morning. We'll send your data automatically to um, 
uh, to um, up to six sites if you're a bronze member or as many sites as you want if you're a silver member. That's my dashboard at Brooks Angle. Mr Pickwick, you'll see that I've set forwarding for aid books, bibliotics, books and collectibles, antique book, a libris, bookshops.com.au, Books, there's two of them because one's data and one's pictures, they require a different upload. Uh, a Libris again, same thing. And Scribblemonger at the bottom, I don't know what's happened to that site, I think it seems to have disappeared. But anyway, they're the sites I forward my books to at the moment. And you'll see I've got them all set to yes over there. And when I send a single upload of books or pictures to Books Angle, they get set off all those sites. I don't have to even think about it. The next thing I see is the upload report from the sites. Now there are other services that do this. Those of you who listed Biblio will know that Biblio offers something similar. They offer, I think, five or six sites. Uh, I think they do pictures as well. Um, Art of Books will charge you a fee for doing this, and there's open questions as to you know some aspects of how that works. And the Phil's site will do a similar type of job. Although I don't think Phil's will service all of those sites, and I've got a feeling Art of Books might not as well. That probably does. But we, we can uh, set that forwarding and uh, so on. Now the important thing about this is that if you then want to get fancy, as a silver member you can upgrade into silver and you can then do the same thing, only this time you can use our variable data forwarding. And what that means is you can set all sorts of automated rules which are easy to set so that here's a set of potential rules. A libris, because of this stupid postage thing, I want an extra ten dollars added to every one of my prices that go. To, excuse me, every one of my prices that go to a Libris, I want to add ten dollars to because I have to because I'm going to lose money otherwise. Importantly, any book that's going to a Libris, those of you who listed Libris will know that you've got to send the book to America and they then send it back again. They give you nine dollars for all of that. So a two kilo book that's going to cost you thirty or forty to post is just hopeless. So. Then I say, in my next rule, I say now also, while still within a Libris, because of my weight coding, anything over a kilo, I want you to add another $10 to. Okay? To just those books. And anything over three kilos, I want you to kill from a Libris altogether. Just don't even bother sending it there. Then I go on to Abe, and I say now at Abe, I want you to add $4 to all my books over one kilo. But the rest <coughs> leaves it is. Then I go to biblio.com and make a rule for there. And I might say at biblio.com, Reduce all my prices at biblio.com by 2.5%. Then I go to my website and I say, when you're sending on there, I want all my prices there 10% less than my standard price for all my other sites, and so on and so forth. And you can set all your different rules for each site and then bed them all in, and thereafter, the forwarding that takes place, every time you send an upload, it applies all those rules that you've set, massages each file before it sends it off to each of the eight, nine or ten sites you list on. Now this is a fantastic tool and, and depending on preference, and some people faint with horror when they say, ah, oh, but people will see that books are cheaper on your website than they are at Abe. I say, well, and? Um, you know, <laughs> I want them to buy the book at my website rather than at Abe. I don't have to pay any commission. Um, so it always puzzles me why people find this a horror, but, but it's, it's up to you. You don't have to do all this, but you can. And Again, it's a question of using all the tools that are available to try and drive bigger and better markets for, for us as booksellers. I'm not talking Kerry Packer here. I'm talking our needs and our requirements, which are, look, I'll, wouldn't it be great if I could just, I'd like my books a little bit cheaper on Biblio.com because Bookfinder and places are finding them. I'd rather sell them at Biblio than at A because I'm paying less or whatever it might be. I was mesmerised by what you said. That is in the What's the question? Sorry. How to edit that? How to edit? Is it under the edit? Oh, you can edit here. Oh, you do it under the edit. Yeah, yeah, you can edit here. I don't have a graphic, but when you can edit it, it, it throws up the uh, little box uh, which asks you for your username, your password, your uh, FTP account name at Abe or wherever, and your password at, at Abe, and that's about it. And uh, and you set all that. You also remote folder if you need it, which you do for Chris Lands, I think. You can also set your own website into this little pattern provided your website is ready and willing to take files that you're forwarding. Uh, what you were just describing is sending the di different information to each... Yes. I, I missed this box, you do that. 
No, uh, that's an, another box again, because then you've upgraded to silver and you select the thing called variable forwarding. And, and there, I didn't put that box up because it's a bit complicated. Okay, a bit of learning curve there, because you, you've got so much option of what rules you can set. But it is, it, it, anybody who can drive a car can, can work it out, okay? It's, it's not so complicated as to just be for technical <coughs> wizards. Basically, it's a page where you set six or eight different rules in sequence and they work in succession. Okay, so you might set for a Libris, you might set add $10 to all listings. Your next rule might be for any listing over a kilo, add $5. First it'll add the 10, then it will add the 5 if it's over a kilo. You got me? And you set your rules until you're happy with the end result and then you click yes, that's that for that side. And then the same forwarding dashboard will recognise that you're sending it to a Libris, but it'll pick up that you're using variable. Okay? Does that answer you? Question? Yes. Yeah, yep. Okay, so that's your forwarding to other sites. The next graphic is um, really a tool we've just released, and this, this, we're really, really excited about this one. This is called creating mini catalogues. Basically, what this means is you can go to a special page on our website and you can create, do effectively, do a little advanced search amongst your own books. You can select all my books on Antarctica but only those over $20, whatever. You can set whatever parameters you want. And that creates, just as an ordinary search does, a little group on the screen of those 20 books or whatever. On our advanced catalogue page, you actually do the same thing, but you do it with an instruction to create a catalogue. And once you're happy with it and say, yes, they're the ones I want, you pull a lever, and it creates a little link. Nice, neat little link, this one. And you can then copy that link back to yourself. You can do a backload of all your catalogues. And you can then put that link into any email that you send to a customer. And when they click on that, they will see just the books that you've set into that catalogue at the book sample site. They will see your 24 books on Antarctica over $20, if that's what you've set. We also automatically create catalogues for you of all of our fixed categories. So that at the very least, you see category aviation. Every time somebody orders a aviation book from you, you can just click that link there, pop it in the email. So if you'd like to see the rest of my aviation books, just click here. They click on that, and they'll go, and they will see, in my case, 111 aviation books. Now this is a fantastic tool, and all those who are using it regularly are beginning to get increased sales out of it, because people love catalogues. People love customised catalogues. You can create whatever catalogue you want. You can, let's say you've got lots of books by Robert B. Parker. Let's say you're Robert B. Parker specialist. Let's say you've got 100 books by Robert B. Parker, and you've got 20 of them assigned. You can create two catalogues, all my books by Robert B. Parker, and the second one can be all my books by Robert B. Parker signed. Then when you, somebody buys a Robert B. Parker, you can say, if you're interested in all my Robert B. Parker books, just click here. And if you're interested in just my signed ones, just click here. They click there and they'll see the list of your books in that category. Now, cunning use of that as a tool to various selected clients is guaranteed to increase your flow on business. And we at Books Angle always say, we consider each sale that you get it's finished, it's over, they're paid, they're, you know, that, you'd think that's the end of that one. No, no, no. We see that sale as the beginning of the next sale to that same customer. We see the sale that you've made as um, a, a gateway into the next sale to that customer. It might be a book by the same author, it might be a book in the same subject area. After all, he's bought a book from you, you've sent it to him, he's presumably happy, he's happy with your price. Everybody in this room will be servicing well, they'll be sending out quickly and well and well packaged. He's happy. You've got a happy customer. You've got an excellent target, if you like, word I hate, but still. You've got an excellent target for repeat business. And these sorts of tools enable you to closely target that potential new customer. Well, I the, uh, bronze program or the program. Beg your pardon? Is that the bronze program or the silver program? The crowd catalogues is both. It's, it's both for bronze and, and silver, because we think it's so important. From our point of view, it suits us, because it's, it, people, when they click the catalogue, are being taken to the books angle side, it's likely to increase sales of books angle, so from a bronze, we'll be taking commission from the silver 
we have their silver membership, so you can create your own catalogues, yeah, and, and use them. And we're very excited by that tool. We only just released it a few weeks ago. But you can probably get a sense from that of the types of approach that we have. We're constantly looking for ways of putting tools in your hands. I, I know this sounds a bit like hype, but I really don't mean it. We're constantly trying, and have done for 10 years, of putting tools in your hands that would enable you, if you use them at all, to enlarge your own business. In other words, God helps those who help themselves is our sort of, um, is our approach to that sort of thing. So, but it's no use saying help yourself if you don't have the right tools to, um, to do so. Now we're just about out of time on this paper, so we'll just quickly move on to the last two graphics I've got. The first one is uh, online picture proofing. Now this is an important tool which enables you to proof your pictures as you've actually uploaded them online. <coughs> you go into this module, and this is available only at silver level, and you've uploaded all your pictures, you can now go in and quickly march through them 50 at a time and check they're correct. Check they're not upside down, check that they're, because that's actually what's online. And you'll see, if there's only three, you can go and mark them picture proof, meaning that's okay, I'm happy with that one. Or you can click the button called delete. If you click delete, it'll immediately remove that picture from our books angle side. And if you set your auto forwarding, it'll zap a fixed graphic that says picture temporarily unavailable to all your other sites. So you're going through your proof and you think, ah, oh my God, Hunt for Red October is um, Alan Border's biography. Ah, what's happened? Kill. Press delete. Bang. Gone. History. Wrong picture. Gone. You then upload the correct picture at your leisure and that will replace the holding graphic at your other sites. And um, <clears throat> so I'll hang on, David. I'll just finish off the last graphic because I'm running a bit short of time. You'll notice up the uh, back one. Oh. You'll notice up the top for your proofing, you can select periods. <coughs> you can select all your books to proof, or just those you sent last week or last month or whatever. You've got a bit of a choice in there. Once they're marked proof, they don't pop up again until you say show all pictures. It's assumed that you're happy with them and you put them to bed. And once you've proofed all your pictures online, you can then um, uh, progressively uh, just do each week's. It doesn't take long. And it means, once again, you're using Books Angle as a control centre for your picture management and your picture quality control because you're forwarding them off to all your other sites and under the forwarding option there's a button that you've got if you've made a lot of changes you can press a button saying send all my pictures to A, send all my pictures to Biblio and, it'll, and our server will just send the whole lot to A or to Biblio so if you've done a major edit job or whatever you can then just go oh look I can't be bothered remembering which one to which bang just send the whole lot to A and it will upgrade the whole lot. The last graphic I'm not going to talk about very much at all it's very simple <coughs> At the Books Angle site, like one or two other sites for Memory Antique Book and one or two others have a sort of variable matrix, we have a variable shipping matrix which you set up a simple six by six table. Six destinations, six zones that you can pick and six weight ranges and you can set your own weight ranges. My own are set at number one means under 250 grams, number two means under 500 grams, number three means under a kilo, number four means two to three, uh, one to two kilos Number five means two to three kilos, and number six means over three kilos, forget about price. You can then set a matrix up here, which you'll see over there, this is my matrix, you'll see over there is, is two, two zones for Australia and four international zones. You'll see that my weight one, weight two, weight three, weight four, I've set a different price. And when, because I send a weight code one to six with every book from my database to Books Angle, Whenever a customer in Malaya selects one of my books that is coded Asia Pacific, that's Carl, known as Z2, uh, that is weighted three, which is up to a kilo, he's going to be quoted in the post is $24.50, as opposed to the same book being ordered from Australia where he's going to get quoted $3.95. Something's a bit wrong with those figures, but you get the principle. I don't actually charge only three ninety five, I charge a bit more. But anyway, whatever the point. You, you set yourself those numbers and then when a customer orders your book they get quoted exact postage. You don't have to go to them with a silly request more postage business. So that's our shipping matrix which works very well. It's a sophisticated side and it gets more sophisticated all the time but it's very simple and very easy to use. And I think there are those here in this room who will testify that they're not IT gurus, they're not 
experts at wheeling databases up and down the hill. I think Peter McMahon down the back would be one of the first to acknowledge that his IT expertise and skills are limited, uh, certainly not advanced, and yet he wheels all of our tools easily and, and comfortably. That's a great effect. So I, we're constantly on the lookout for how we can make things even simpler rather than trying to make things all the more complicated, and we think we've managed to achieve that. We've got a great site. It's got a lot of great tools, many of them are free, and without again hopping onto the hype wagon, uh, I would hope that a number of those at least today who have had a chance to look into what we have to offer will consider joining our site uh, and helping, helping grow it because we think it's a good one and we think it's a very important one for booksellers selling online. Okay, now we've got a few minutes for questions in that, so let's... Uh, Start over there and then use it. Yeah, Guy, the, uh, just a note on that shipping matrix. Is there a separate price for the UK? A separate what, sorry? A, a separate price for the UK. It seems to be stuck in with the rest of the world. And yet the price would be significantly yeah, different. Yeah, 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 matrix is UK. You've got four. four oh, you've got four. Yeah, you, you can choose, you want, choose yeah. whichever ones you want. Okay. So They used to have just four zones themselves. They were the four zones for Australia yeah. Post until recently. Now Australia Post has suddenly made it all different um, and we might have to address that by, I haven't had a chance to look into that as yet, but that's certainly how it was at Australia Post until recently. Yeah, so you can, you can amend that yourself. You oh can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you change that whatever you want. Okay. Uh, hang on, one at a time. Over there is next. Hi. With the Books Angle site, with your database, is it web-based, so you log on to your database from any computer, or is it software that you download to your computer? Would be the Books Angle desktop database? Well, yes, yeah, so if I have my data, if I put my database in the Books Angle one, so use your software, yeah, yeah, the am Angle. I logging on to any computer and I can log into my database? No, no, basically you log on, once you become a member of Books Angle, you yeah. log on and download the software, yes, so the okay. database software. And built into it is conversion routines from home base, bookhound, uh, or any other um, uh, common uh, book tracker. Uh, the, the software, there's scripts in there that will automatically import your data from them into our database with as close a match as we can manage. Uh, <coughs> or we can give assistance for that to get somebody started, depending on what's involved. Then you've got your database set at desktop level. And from thereafter, you then drive that database back up to Books Angle. Yes, but then that desktop, that's the only place I can upload them, you know what I mean? Like, I can't log on. Yeah, it's not like eBay. You have to use your computer that you have your database. Yes, that's yeah. what asking. Because of, you know, I had jobs before where you have databases, but you can log on anywhere, you know, onto the database. No, our, our database is recognised by A, Biblio, like the output format. You, you send our file from our database, you just send that to A. You've got to tell them that you've shifted to ours. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's saying that yeah. you have to use. If I have it on my laptop. If you log on, on the internet, you actually log on to your own. Oh, you're yeah, own, yeah, I say, yeah. yeah. So in other words, you'd have to download the software on multiple computers if you wanted to use it in different locations. No, well, you can use it in different locations. You can use as many copies yeah, as you like. You have to download it on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, actually, actually, let us know. Yeah. Uh, the actual, if you want to use it on another machine, you just download it once. And after that, you can just copy the, the thing on a stick and take it to any yeah, number of other right. things, yeah. 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 Now, just, uh, uh, Randy, the gentleman there, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Chris Marshall from Newcastle Books. I actually got a plethora of questions, but um, I'll just do two of them, eh? Um, one is when do you do your picture scanning, or we, we use a scanner for our pictures, do you scan directly in from your software? So from my perspective, we don't care what it names it. It scans straight in through the database. The second question is the book dimensions or the dimensions of the book. Do you put the dimensions of your book into the database as well? Okay. Uh, read pictures, there's no database, for, well, I mean, there are some that pretend to and have a very complicated procedure, but generally speaking, there's no database that will automatically upload your pictures and do your picture management. Generally speaking, if you're using Homebase or any other package, you must set it up and, uh, and then upload your pictures separately. The pictures always have the same name as the serial number, 12345.jpg, 
if the serial number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, our, our system works the same yeah, as, say, so home base. So in, so in your database screen where you're entering your data, yeah. and you say, okay, now I want to add a picture, you just click on that button, and it, it automatically goes to your scanner. Whatever's in your scanner, it scans, puts the picture into a predetermined directory, and just allocates that picture directly, because that's what our current database does. Okay. Well, our, ours doesn't. Our, ours, ours, you simply mark the book as scanned, if, if it's scanned, and you then put in the number of pictures if you're going to scan into a box, four or three if you're going to have multiple ones, and our, our database does not perform that task that you've raised. It's a simple, simple no. Uh, what it does do, however, if you've got a four in the number of pictures, when you come to create your eBay HTML, it creates all the URLs for those four pictures uh, on the assumption that you've got them stored in Booksample because there's not much point using our database if you're not using a Booksample. Uh, you don't have to, I mean, you could use it for other things, but it, it automatically creates that for eBay and puts the pictures in by way of URL, so to that extent it uploads the pictures, but not the actual physical pictures themselves. That remains a separate management procedure. Oh, Just, uh, Lewis down here, and then Paul. Oh, well, our first Paul since you're there, and then Lewis. Yes, Paul. Um, yeah, Paul McShane, uh, Bibliothes, Skippy Post. Great that you've got the weight in. I don't, I'm not sure how many other, you know, databases uh, around the world do that. It should have been done from the very beginning of the book trade. Um, but I just wonder how flexible that shipping matrix is. I mean, uh, is there the capacity to have, like, two different postal rates for, for zones and things like that? Uh, well, Paul, as I explained earlier to you, like, until very recently, that was Australia Post. Yeah. They had zone A, zone B, zone C, and D. So we had to have some sort of practical limit. So we decided international zones that you could choose and two domestic. Now the same thing applies with eBay. And we found that if you start using more than that, it just gets out of hand. And it's very difficult for people to nut it all out and enter it. We, we suggest people average things a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I realise that the rest of the world has now become a bit of a nightmare because you've got UK, which is one rate, Germany, that's another one, Russia, that's another one. So there's a problem there. We, and we're looking at reviewing that a little bit, but until recently that's exactly how Australia Post wanted it. What we have done is for Australia and Canada is turned them into two countries. We've set East and West for Australia and for Canada because of the big differ differential in price, but that does not apply to the States because in the States and the UK, mostly, you, you're shipping all around the place is common. There's no, in the UK, there's no difference whether you send it to Scotland or, or Cornwall. Whereas here, there's the big difference. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, there are restrictions, and but we're looking at those in the light of the new Australia Post yeah. stuff. But I can assure you, Paul, that if we ran to sort of 10, I think Australia Post have now got 15 zones. Yeah. If we ran to 15 zones, collection, people would simply stop using it because they'd think, oh my God, this is a nightmare. We wanted to keep it yeah. simple. I, and I guess from a self-interested point of view, I was uh, wondering about, you know, like, it wasn't that long ago, 2006, when booksellers would often quote air mail and economy air mail. Um, so from Skippy Post's point of view, to be able to see people, and we see it even on eBay and other sites where they offer, you know, one rate and an point. economy yeah. rate. Um, sometimes no. that's a difference yeah. between getting the sale or not. The website does cater to that. Has it? Yes. Has it got? It has uh, two shipping zones, uh, <coughs> Oh, OK, sorry, well, I was not aware of that. That, that is replicated. You've got two, uh, so you can select e economy and... Uh, okay. uh, so there is that, yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that. that's, the, that's the default for the um, whatever it is. Uh, you know, that's either advanced or, or not. I think he's writing the code down. Yeah, no, my apologies. I'm just leaving you there. Just a quick comment, Guy. Do people increase flexibility to what Christmas do? Christmas you've got ultimate flexibility with setting shipping options with the crystal side. Oh, what does that mean? Well, ultimate flexibility with crystals on shipping. Oh, crystals, well, yeah. yeah. The way they do it is it allows you all that flexibility. Yeah. As far as crystalline is concerned, they have their own local settings that you can use. Uh, crystalline, uh, you can forward our uh, database file, we'll, we'll go to crystalline. Uh, they read our filter, in other words, so you can use our database to sort of refresh Chrislands. And we've also built in Chrislands specific boxes. One is for their featured item, you put yes and they'll feature it. Um, uh, and they will read our weight um, codes. Uh, also, our weight codes, also for Chrislands purposes, automatically convert to a decimal weight. 
uh, which is what Chris Lambs wants. They want a decimal weight, whether it's in kilos or pounds, ounces. So for one pound, eight ounces, they want 1.5 in pounds, okay? Uh, so yes, Chris Lambs will read our weight output and they then have their own matrix and quite a sophisticated one where they will um, use that data and, and refresh it in the same way. So Guy, just to clarify, um, if just we... Just wait one second, mate. We need to have you on film. Right. No, Guy, just a question to clarify. So if I'm using a Flexidex database system set up through books and collectibles, uh, can I use that and then go on to, through books angle, and then upload it to books and collectibles? Yes, you don't have to. You don't have to do the double step. We, we'll, we'll read Flexidesk. I have had a few problems with, with sorting it out, but we, we will and can read directly from your Flexidesk data. So you don't have to actually upgrade to another database. We will take. See, Flexidesk outputs in uh, tabulated format. Uh, it does, trust me, and or can be made to. And uh, any, any tabulated format we can read. Okay, it can come from anywhere, a Lotus spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, Microsoft Word. So long as it's ordinary capital limited, we can happily accept it, okay? It doesn't have, uh, you, you've then got two choices. You can either use, get a conversion, if you want to upgrade to our database, you can do that any time in the future and simply import the data to your database. Or alternatively, uh, you can, um, alternatively, you can upload all your books via FlexiDesk to Books Angle, then do a backload of data from Books Angle and, and there's an automated import routine to import that backloaded data into the book sector database. So it's pretty flexible. Thank you. And Lewis? Uh, um, it's obviously a book specific site. So what the stock that uh, booksellers have that isn't specifically a book, how does that site work? Yeah, good question. Thanks, Lily. I think you're, you're particularly interested in maps and prints oh, and that well, sort of I mean, stuff. Well, yeah. any bookseller that's got a picture yeah. or a painting as well. Would Certainly like the program can be used perfectly adequately for maps, uh, prints, pictures, for the purpose of uploading, say, to ABE. You've got to upload it to ABE and sites like that in some sort of format that they're happy with anyway, so you've got to have some, something or other in binding or but you can, you can click it to, uh, because all those drop down lists are editable. You, oh. you, can, you can put your own things in there, you can put oh. them on the terms up and match, but you can put double folded or, you know, have whatever little thing you want. Um, so you can be, be customised? Yeah, yeah, you can customise every field, uh, with the sole exception of signed. Because, Sorry. with the sole exception of signed, you can't customise that one because it alerts sites if you've got something that signs. Um, all fully customisable. Tim, when you get on eBay, it will show you that in addition to setting an eBay page for books, We've also set a, a, a new eBay page for non-books, and there, this is for eBay, you can do maps, prints, stamps, coins, whatever you want, and, and, and it's specifically configured to get maximum strike power at eBay. Now, we've way run over time on this one, so what I might do is I might just call a whole of questions there. I think would everybody like a five-minute break? I, you know, just a stretch legs or...